This is part 172 of ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to display data from two or more database table columns in an ASP.NET drop-down list. Let me explain what I mean. On the left right here, we've got a database table with three columns, ID, currency, and rate. And here is what we want to do. We want to combine the data that we have in the currency and rate columns and display that in the drop-down list as you can see here. Let's assume we are selling an item online and then we want the price of that item to be available in four different currencies dollar, euro, pound and rupee. So to achieve that we want to combine the data that we have in currency and rate columns and set that as the data text field for the drop-down list and the value that we have in the ID column is going to be the data value field for the drop-down list. So let's see how to achieve this. Obviously the first step here is to create this database table which I have already done. So let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. Here is the SQL script which is going to create sample DB database and here we have the script to create the table itself with those three columns and here we have the script to populate it with test data. Now. As far as this dollar and pound symbols are concerned, we have them on the keyboard, but we don't have euro and rupee symbols. To get euro and rupee symbols, use these two select statements. Select char of 128 is going to give us the euro symbol, and select char of 8377 is going to give us Indian rupee symbol. Notice we get the euro and rupee symbol. So we just need to copy these two and paste them within our insert statements. But one important thing to keep in mind is that do not forget to include this letter N before the Indian rupee symbol within your insert statement. Otherwise, when you select the data from the table, you are going to get question mark instead of rupee symbol. I've already executed the script. So when we select the data from the table, we have our four rows there. I have also created a blank ASP.NET Web Forms project. I named it demo and within the web.config file we have a connection string that points to our sample DB database. The name of the connection string is sample DB. It's pointing to the SQL Server installation I have on my local machine. The database name is sample DB and we are using Windows authentication. And I also have added Web Form 1 to our project and dragged and dropped a drop-down list from the toolbox onto the web form and I have changed its ID to DDL price. Now let's get to the code behind file and here we are going to write some ADO.NET code. So let's bring in three ADO.NET namespaces. We need system.configuration, system.data and system.data.sql client. And I'm going to include a private method here. This method is not going to return anything. And let's call this method bind data set data. So we are going to retrieve data from the SQL Server database table, store it in the data set, and then use that data set as the data source for our drop-down list. So the first thing that we are going to do here is read the connection string from the web.config file. For that, we are going to use the configuration manager class and use the connection strings property. The name of the connection string is sample DB. So let's copy and specify that right here. So we want a connection string with that name. The next thing that we want to do is create a SQL connection object. And to the constructor of this class, we need to specify the connection string that we have read from web.config file. And next, we want to create a SQL data adapter. Let's call the instance DA. Now to the constructor of this class, we need to specify two things. The SQL command that we want to execute and the connection which we want this adapter to use to execute that SQL command. So we are going to specify the SQL command as a string and our select statement is select star from TBL rates table. And we want this adapter to use the SQL connection object that we have already created. And next, let's create a data set object. Let's call the instance DS. And then let's use the data adapter fill op, uh, method and fill the data set. So this fill method is going to open the connection to the SQL Server, execute the select statement, retrieve the data, and fill it in the data set. And it is also going to automatically close the connection. 
The next thing that we want to do is set the data source for our drop-down list. So the data source is going to be the data set. And finally, let's call the data bind method. All right, so within our page load event, if not is post back, so if it is the initial get request, all we want to do is call bind dataset data. So at this point, let's run the application by pressing Control F5 and see what we get. Notice what we are getting here. Within the drop down list, we have system.data.data row view. Why is this? This is because we have not specified for the drop down list what columns from this table to use for the display purpose and what column to use as the value for the drop down list. We specify that by setting data text field and data value field properties. So we want to combine the data that we have in these two columns for the data text field and for the data value field we want to use the value that we have in the ID column. So let's do that now. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So DDL price which is our drop down list dot data value field equals the value that we have in the ID column. DDL price dot data text field equals now for data text field we want to combine the data that we have in currency and rate columns so can we do this so we want the data that is present in the currency column plus we want the data that is present in the rate column now let's see what's going to happen when we do this let's build our solution and reload the page Notice we are getting a low screen of death. Look at the error message. System.data.data row view does not contain a property with name currency rate. So basically within the data set, it is looking for a column with name currency rate because we are concatenating currency and rate strings. Now if you look at the result set that we are getting from the database, we don't have such a column within the result set. And this is the result set that is being stored in the data set. So in the data set also, we don't have such a column. So this data set is set as the data source for the drop-down list. And hence, the page throws this error. Now to fix this to the data set, let's add a column. Data set dot, so within the data set, we have tables of zero, that's our first table. And to the columns collection, let's add a column, let's give it a name, let's call this currency and rate. You can give any meaningful name that you want. And then we need to specify the type of the column. It's going to be string type, so let's use type of keyword and then specify string. And finally, we have to tell where the data is going to come for this column. It's going to come from the currency column. And to that, we want to append space, a single space. So if you look at what we have in the drop-down list, we have the currency symbol, a single space, and then the value from the rate column. So we want the data from the currency column and then a single space, so I'm using single quotes for that, and then the data from rate column. So this is the new column that we added to our data set, and this column is going to contain data from the currency and rate columns. And now we are going to set this as the data text field for our drop-down list. Let's build our solution and reload the page. Notice now we get the data as expected. At the moment, we are using a data set. Now let's see how to achieve exactly the same thing if we are using a data reader instead of data set. So the first thing I'm going to do here is make a copy of this method and let's change the name to bind data reader data. And then we are going to use using block here, which is automatically going to close the connection for us and instead of using SQL data adapter we're going to use SQL command let's call the instance CMD equals new SQL command and instead of data set 
we are going to use SQL data reader. Let's call the instance RDR equals command dot execute reader. And before we execute the command, we have to explicitly open the connection. So let's call open method on the connection object, execute the command. Within the reader, we'll have the data. So we are going to use the while loop to loop through each row that we have in the reader object. All right. So now within the while loop, I'm going to create a list item object. Now, what is a drop down list? A drop down list is a collection of list item objects. So as we loop through each row, we are going to create a list item and then add that list item to the drop down list. Let's call the instance li equals new list item. And we need to specify two things for the list item, the text that we want to display and the value that we want for the drop down list. So the text is going to come from these two columns, currency and rate. And so we are going to use the RDR, the reader object we have. And we are going to ask for the value that is present in the currency column. And to that, we want to append a single space. And then we want to append the value that we have in the rate column. That is going to be the text for the drop down list. And the value is going to come from the ID column. And we want to convert that to string. So let's use to string method. So we have our list item object there. All that is left is to add that to the items collection property on the drop down list. All right, so that's the code required to bind a data reader to the drop down list. So this is easier than using a data set. And within our page load, instead of using bind data set data method, we are going to use bind data reader data method. Let's build our solution and reload the page. Notice we get the same data as expected. So here we have the data set code and here the data reader code. Thank you for listening and have a great day.